This is a remote controlled cyber truck that I designed and it's almost completely 3D printed. This thing has working four wheel drive, fully independent suspension, and even four wheel steering. That means this car is absolutely unstoppable both on and off road. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed, built, and tested this car, as well as tell you how you can get the files to build this yourself completely for free. Now, as a starting point for this project, I used the design from my last RC car build. However, I need to make a lot of changes because my last RC car was meant to go fast, and it also had a lot of problems. My new design is based on this drive assembly, which is made almost entirely of 3D printed parts. All these parts work together to send power to the wheels through 3D printed axles and CV joints, give the car suspension for added stability, and also allow the car to steer while still powering all the wheels. As you can imagine, this required a lot of 3D printing. But the cool thing is all the parts are small enough that you can still print it on a 250 by 250 millimeter printer. I also tried to use a lot of durable materials in this, like this carbon fiber nylon from Bamboo Labs. Although this definitely helps, I don't think it's strictly necessary. You could probably make all this out of PLA and it would work just fine. Now to actually steer the car, I use these high torque servos. These will eventually get attached to the wheels through a system of linkages. And to attach the wheels to the body, the car has two control arms. These also allow the suspension to travel up and down. However, since we also need to steer, a heim joint gets added to each end. This gives the wheel another degree of freedom. Wow, look at that. The steering knuckle is also just a 3D printed piece and gets two heat set inserts installed. Once the axle gets installed to the steering knuckle, the whole thing can get attached to the control arms using a brass bushing and a bolt. Then the steering linkages can get added which are just four millimeter threaded rods with heim joints on the end. Lastly, I can add the suspension, which uses these shocks. These shocks are huge compared to the ones I used in my previous RC car and should provide a lot more adjustability and damping. The shocks just get attached down at the control arm and then to another printed piece up top. This part was actually printed in resin on my Formlabs Form 3 Plus, and it's using their Tough 1500 resin, which is really impact resistant. So it should be great for this application since this piece is gonna take all the load of the suspension. So at this point, we've made an entire drive assembly and it looks pretty good. But since I've heard that cars with two wheels are a little hard to drive, I went ahead and made another drive assembly. This one is pretty much identical, except since it's the rear axle, it has no caster angle. To attach these together, a body piece slides in the middle and then the whole thing gets sandwiched together using some three millimeter threaded rods. With the car frame assembled, the motors can get attached to their mounts and then get installed in the car. In this design, the front and rear axles each have their own motor and they're independent of each other. Initially, I was a little bit worried about this causing problems, but so far it's worked great. Each one of the motors is controlled by one of these ESCs, which can put out up to 100 amps and use up to a six cell battery. The ESCs get plugged into the radio receiver along with the servos, and this will just control everything from the inputs of my transmitter. And with that, this thing is pretty much ready for a first test. So I threw some wheels on it and then took it outside. So far, I've been running this thing with two four cell batteries and it's been plenty of power. With all the weight in the car, the suspension still works really well and has so much travel, it can actually bottom out. The four wheel steering and four wheel drive also works really well together, which I was really pleased about. Driving this thing around turned out to be a ton of fun. This thing absolutely rips. The four wheel drive means it's really hard to get stuck. And then the four wheel steering makes it have a really tight turning radius. Now this car is great, but it feels like it needs some sort of body. Only problem is most fancy car bodies have a ton of curves and they're just really hard to model. But then I thought of a car body that's so simple, it's literally just a block with like three cuts out of it. That's right, it's the Cybertruck. It also happens that the full-size Cybertruck also has four-wheel steering. So this is like a perfect fit. So I jumped into CAD and designed the body. The CAD program I'm using here is Onshape, and they're also the sponsor of this video. Throughout all the versions of my RC cars, I've been using Onshape to design them, and it's been fantastic. The revision tracking and branching structure makes it really easy to track the changes that I've made, as well as go back and reference old designs if I need to. Additionally, just the ability to assemble all these parts in a digital space has saved me a ton of time making sure everything's gonna actually work once I print it. Onshape is entirely cloud-based, so everything is auto-saved and you can access it from anywhere. 
The designs can even be accessed by multiple people at the same time and edited, which makes everything really collaborative. Onshape is also completely free to use, so if you want to use it for your projects, I'll put a link in the description below. Now let's actually build this body. Even though this body is split into two pieces, it is too big to fit in my Bamboo Lab X1, which is definitely my favorite printer. However, I did just get this K1 Max from Creality, and it should just barely fit in here. Unfortunately, during my first print, I got a pretty tragic layer shift at the very end. Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm not sure what caused this, but I changed some settings, and everything worked on the second attempt. These parts are absolutely huge, and they look pretty good too. I printed the windshield separate, and then used some magnets to attach it. This will allow me easy access to electronics, as well as to change out batteries and things like that. I used some masking tape to cover up the rest of the body, and then painted the trim pieces and windows black. This came out looking good, but the most important thing on this is the lights. The Cybertruck has some really iconic light bars, both in the front and the back. To replicate these, I got these LED strips. The rear LED strip is red, and it gets installed into this 3D printed plastic piece, and then super glued onto the body. The front LEDs also just get glued in place on the front bumper. In my opinion, these things turned out really well, and it makes the whole thing look super cool. All right, this thing sounds absolutely incredible when it drives. I'm gonna put this mic on here and I'll let you guys listen to it. It's awesome. Oh my God, this camera just got smoked by the car. Somehow it survived. The car also took some damage right here too. I have no idea how this camera didn't get destroyed. That's crazy. Now beyond just driving this in fields and parking lots, I also drove it up some piles of mulch and it did really well. My favorite thing to do though is just rip around loose dirt or mulch. It has so much power that it can just spin all four tires no problem, but with the four wheel steering, it's still really maneuverable. Now I actually have some ideas on how to make this car even cooler. One of them is to add tracks, which would make this thing absolutely insane. So be sure to subscribe for that. I can't emphasize enough how fun this thing is to drive. So if you're looking for a good project to do, this could be it. As always, you can access the files for this project completely for free using the link to the Onshape file in the description. This means you can open up my raw CAD file and edit it or export it or do whatever you want with it. I will also put a list of all the hardware I used in the description below. If you guys wanna see more of this car, let me know in the comments below especially if you have any suggestions or ideas. And be sure to subscribe for more content like this. But that's about it for this one, so I will see you guys in the next video.